So let's look at our third performance metric, which is the number of parts of type 1 in the Q4 station D. So similar to number in system or number in Q, uh, this metric is also a time dependent uh, metric. So we, have, we need to track the number of parts of type 1 in the Q4 station D over time. So we have a time dependent statistic. So uh, for, this, for this particular performance metric, again, we need a state statistic. So let's go back to our Simio model and see how we can um, do this in Simio. So uh, what I need is a model state that is incremented whenever part uh, a part of type 1 enters the queue and it needs to be decremented whenever uh, a part 1 uh, leaves the queue and uh, starts processing. So I'm going to go to my model definitions um, states. Um, again I need an integer state. I'm going to call it num part 1 at queue D. Num part 1 at QD, it's defaulted to 0. And now I need to do the increment, uh, I need to do the incrementation and decrementation. So I'm going to select my station and then go to add on processes. And on entered, which occurs immediately after an entity has entered this object and is about to start the transfer in time. Um, I'm going to define an add-on process and um, do an assign, which is going to be um, num part one at QD, and I need to increment it. But I only want to do this if the part that has arrived in the, into the queue is of type one. So I also need a decide step that is condition based and says if model entity um, is part one, then I increment the number of part one entities, um, of type one entities in my queue. Then I'm going to need a second add-on process to decrement the value when a part one, uh, when a type one entity leaves uh, the queue. So I can do it right before processing. So this occurs when an entity has been allocated server capacity, but before entering or um, ending transfer into its processing station. So that's exactly when the entity leaves the queue. So I'm going to. Uh, decrement my uh, state variable here. So I, I'm going to have again my assign, but this time I'm going to decrement it. And I'm also going to have my uh, decide step. So I only do this uh, decrement, uh, I only decrement when um, the type of the entity that is about to leave the queue is uh, type one. So so now I have implemented the logic to track the number of part uh, one entities in the queue for station D. Um, and now I need to, in order to get statistics on this uh, metric, I need to tell Simio to track this value, to track the value of my model state using a state statistic. So I'm just going to go to my definitions and then elements. I'm going to need a state statistic I'm going to call it NIQ1D. So number in Q uh, type 1 station D. And I'm going to connect this to my um, num, not num in sys, but num part 1 at QD. So now when I run the model, let's run and fast forward. And look at the results. So now I also see my um, NIQ1D in my pivot grid, uh, which has an average value of 1.58. And in fact, let me do a quick filtering here um, and get rid of the other stations. Let's just look at station D here. 
and when I look at server D, input buffer contents, number in station, the average is uh, 3.29. Uh, that includes um, all part types, but the average number of uh, type 1 entities in the queue uh, of, this, of this station is actually 1.58. Okay, so let's look at our last metric, which is the total loss due to selling at scrap price. So um, when you think about this performance metric, it's not really a state or tally statistic um, because the total loss is evaluated at the end of each replication. So um, at the end of each replication, we only get one observation of, of this performance metric. So uh, to implement this uh, type of metric, we use output statistics. So let's go back to Simio and see how, how this is done. So when you think about uh, what we need to implement, the logic to collect this information, it's really a two-step process. So in the first step, what we need is a mechanism to count the number of times that entities are processed, uh, processed on station D. So each entity will have uh, an attribute associated with it that stores the number of times that the entity has been processed on station D. So for that, I, I'm going to need a, um, an entity uh, state, a model entity state. And the second step of the uh, process that I need is to count the number of bad parts uh, before the entities leave the system. So let's go ahead and implement these two steps uh, that we need to, uh, to implement our uh, output statistic. So the first thing I need, as I mentioned, is a model entity um, state. And since I'm counting here, I can use an integer state. I'm going to call it uh, times processed on D. Times processed on D. So now each model entity uh, realization will have this uh, state with it. And now I can go back to my model and simply increment this for, for each entity when the entity goes uh, or visits the, uh, the station. So I can, um, there are alternative ways to do with this. I'm going to use uh, the, one of the add-on processes that I already have. So I have an add-on process for uh, entered um, at station D. So what I'm going to do is have an, another assigned step. And I'm going to do this regardless of the decision that I'm making here. And I'm going to um, select my model entity um, times processed on D. Let me copy this. And I increment this at this uh, step. So what happens is every time an entity enters station D, I increment the number of times uh, or the count that gives me the number of times that the entity has visited this station. So initially this uh, model entity dot times process and D is uh, zero. So the first time that the entity visits station D it becomes one, the second time it becomes two and so on. So that's the, that's the first uh, step of, of the process. And the second step is to uh, count the number of bad parts. So what I need for this since the number of bad parts is uh, an attribute of the model, I'm going to need a model state. So I'm going to go to my, I have, I have my model selected, go to definitions, states, and I'm going to define two integer values because I have different costs uh, for uh, my uh, entity types. So I'm going to have uh, two counts, two counters for number of bad parts for type one and number of bad parts of type two. So I'm going to, I'm going to call the first one num bad one. I'm going to call the second one num bad two. And they're both initially uh, set to zero. And then I'm going to go to my facility view and 
<clears throat> this time I'm going to do the counting before the entities leave the system. So for my sync object, I'm going to define an add-on process, uh, add process on insert. And in this add-on process, I first need a decide step to, to, to decide whether the entity that is about to leave the system is processed more than two times on, on station D. So it's going to be a condition-based uh, decision. And the decision will be model entity times processed greater than two. If this is true, then I'm going to count the number of bad parts based on the type. So I'm going to need another decide step to determine the type of the entity to distinguish uh, part one from part two. So um, I'm going to have model entity uh, dot is part one. So if my model entity is of type one, then I'm going to increment my nombad1 so nombad1 will be nombad1 plus 1 and I'm going to just copy this assign and this time if the type of the entity is 2 I'm going to increment the number of uh, bad parts uh, for the second type so at the end of the simulation run I have the total number of bad parts for uh, for the two entity types that I have stored in these two uh, model states that I have defined. So now, in order to uh, evaluate the cost, the total loss at the end of the replication, I simply need an output statistic. So I'm going to go to my model definitions elements, and this time I define an output statistic. I'm going to call it total loss. And the expression that I have is $25 per uh, each uh, bad part or scrapped part of type 1 plus uh, $38 uh, per non-bad or for non-bad 2. So this is going to be the... Uh, expression for my total loss which is going to be evaluated at the end of the simulation run so i'm going to run my model now in the fast forward mode and look at the results and this time i can see my total loss output statistic um, with a final value of 27,976 which is the total loss because of scrapped parts